Well, the background on repository corticotropin injection is that it actually came out in 1952. And before, in the, in the 60s, it had 51 indications. Recently, in the 2000s, there was more information that was found out about repository corticotropin injection, um, specifically that it, it, it affects melanocortin receptors. And so, uh, consequently, it was the, the indications were revised. Now they're 19 indications as of the late 2000s. Well, um, so it's an injection, and uh, its cousin, prednisone, or oral steroids, prednisone or prednisolone, were actually became more popular because it was easier, perhaps, to um, offer that to a patient. You know, say, here's a medication, take it home, not come and get an injection. Though nowadays, we've, we've got to become more familiar with giving injections to our patients and actually having our patients give themselves injections. It was probably more common in the 50s and 60s to hand somebody a pill. Now, the uh, the uh uh, the, the injectable, the injectable uh, medication was available and, and was being used. It just wasn't as popular as, the, as oral steroids. The interesting thing is that in the 1990s, we learned more about corticotropin injection. And what we, what we found out was that there are melanocortin receptors. There are five melanocortin receptors. Only, only the second one, the second receptor, is the one that, is, that has steroidogenic effects. The other four actually work directly on different cells like B cells or T cells, microglial cells, and, and have a direct effect. For instance, in, the, in, in dermatomyositis and polymyositis, the, the uh, melanocortin receptors are on the, the myocyte, the, the, the muscle cell, and so there's a direct effect on the muscle cell, and that's why in, in the year 2012, that was uh, promoted for dermatomyositis and polymyositis, and that's actually when I started using it more in, um, in our more complicated autoimmune diseases.